Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. Today's object is this 135F2 lens from Nikon, and it has a little party trick up its sleeve. It has defocus image control, and I'll talk more about that, but that's why it's named DC, and a better name had probably been if they had called it bokeh control. But more about that later. The lens itself is quite conventional as we know them. Uh, it has a, a distance scale here uh, closest to the camera, then you have a switch where you can switch between manual and, and autofocus. Uh, it comes with a focus throw, of course, and then it has the control of the defocus image control. A little bit unusual other than the, the defocus control is that the lens hood, other than being built in, it actually yeah, pops out like this. And then if you turn it, it is threaded so that after a little while, it, you, you can't turn it anymore. And then you, then it sort of, is fixed now so I can actually people don't like that I do this but you can actually push your camera on top of your lens like this and it won't collapse and you simply just loosen it again by reversing the process and uh, some say that the the cap is a little bit short but uh, at least it's always there and it's easy to lock the defocus control works the the way that you set the defocus to the same or a lower value as your aperture. So if, for instance, if you're shooting at f4 and you wanted to have the rare elements in your picture to look even more blurred, then you could set the defocus control to 2, 2.8 or 4, uh, whatever strength, if I can call it like that, you would like to have. If you set it to more than the aperture you're shooting with, then you get out of uh, focus image. It looks like you have uh, uh, greased your lens, so uh, of course you can use that artistically, but, <laughs> but uh, if, if you want sharp, Im sharp images as you typically do with this lens designed for, for portraiture, then I think you want to stay below uh, or at the uh, aperture you're shooting at. I have not seen any reviewers written or on YouTube or the like that have recommended to use the if for foreground part, this is where the elements in the foreground become uh, more blurred. Everybody says this is only to be used in the rare part because otherwise your pictures will look a little bit strange. I only use the rare part, so, so be aware that if you think this looks very complicated, you only actually use the right hand side here of the defocus control. Just to show you how much glass is required to go from 2.8 down to 2.0, when we're talking 135 millimeter lenses, uh, I have here to the right uh, the AIS version, uh, the manual focus lens uh, from Nikon, uh, where you can see that it requires quite a lot of more glass just to go, you know, from 2.8 down to 2.0. So this lens here, the defocus control lens, is quite heavy. Uh, I think it's more than 800 grams. So be aware that uh, if you choose to invest in this one, you will need to carry, uh, you know, quite a lot of weight. And uh, if you mount it on, say, a small camera like I have here over here on the on the XT20, uh, then it may even look a little bit strange. It is a, a rather big glass, but of course the benefit is that you can go really wide down to f2. Even though I consider this to be a vintage lens, it's actually still listed on Nikon's homepage and I, I think it must still be in production. You can also get a brand new copy over at B&H homepage. Uh, it will set you back $1,400. The newer versions, those they made from, I believe, around 1995 and forward, they have distance information. This one is an older copy. You can see it only has... Uh, or it doesn't have the little D, so there's no distance information here. But otherwise, uh, the construction is very much the same. Same amount of glass and so on and so forth. Maybe they have also improved the coating a little bit going going forward here. I, I really can't tell. But in terms of construction and, and so on, they seem to be very, very similar. So they have been making this, this lens for more than 20 years. If you buy used, my recommendation is that you buy from Japan. Uh, I have only good experience buying gear from Japan. Of course, you need to study the description very well, but find a dealer with lots of uh, good remarks and uh, you should be good. The lens came to me with FedEx and it took them only four days to get it from Japan to, to uh, Denmark and I was really impressed. And what I like about FedEx is that uh, the tax, some, some carriers, they claim the tax up front so you won't get the lens until you pay the tax. FedEx, they just hand out the, the parcel 
and then they they send you a letter uh, with the taxes afterwards. Really, really good service. My copy set me back roughly half of what the, uh, the price of a new lens is. This is May 2021. I still think there's lots of options to find good copies of this lens out there without paying the price for a new copy. So if we look at the sharpness and contrast, here I have two test shots, one to the left at f8 and one to the right at f2, meaning fully open. And if we compare, for starters, the center sharpness here, I go in at 300% you will see that the middle of the road aperture here to the left has much more contrast and is also sharper. If you ask me, uh, you can see the, the lines in the pillars here are much, much more easy to see. And also if you read, you can read here it says New York. That's more difficult over here. You actually have to know it says New York before you're able to do that. So definitely big difference even center sharpness between f2 and f8. If I go to the Euronote sign over here, you can see also the, the sign here is much clearer at f8. And also if you look at the number here, it's a little bit blurred here. If you ask me, it's crystal clear here. Down here to the right, I have a little number 83. And you can see it's very difficult to read over here at f2. Very easy to read at f8. And top right, same thing I see. Not as much as the bottom right, but still you can see 196 here is much sharper to the left than it is to the right. So definitely a very big difference between the lens at f2 and f8, but mind you, I'm here zoomed in at 300%. So it's a brutal compare, but there is definitely a big difference in terms of the sharpness at these two different apertures. Lucky for me, uh, I'm happy to report that Nikon's MTF chart is exactly telling the same story with very, very sharp lens at a middle of the road aperture and not so sharp, fully open. Okay, so let's take a look at this defocus control and what can it do for you. To the left, I have a shot with out the defocus control engaged and to the right it is engaged. In both cases I had shot at f2.8, meaning that to the right both the aperture and the defocus control is set to 2.8. And the difference is very subtle if you ask me. You can see here, if you look very very carefully, this circle, this circle here, is a little bit more soft over here if you ask me. And also here you can see there's a line, a contrast line here, which is a little bit more soft over here. Let me just see if I, if I go. The funny thing is that if you zoom in, it sometimes actually gets harder to see. But you can see there is a clear line here where it's more soft over here. But it is extremely subtle, if you ask me. The bokeh is really, really good. You can see the nine rounded blades, they really pay off. It's a nice round circle you have here. Some of the vintage lenses where you have only seven straight blades or or maybe even less, you see some bokeh that is very edgy. But here it's nice, really nice bokeh. But the difference between having the defocus control engaged and not, that is very, very difficult to see for me. Here at 2.8, so here at a higher f-stop number, f4, both to the left and to the right. And here I have engaged the defocus control also at f4. If you look here, again, I think the differences are very, very subtle, but I think maybe the bokeh here, uh, the white parts is a little bit more transparent, opaque, pale, whatever you want to call it. There's a slight difference, but it isn't much. And also if you look at the, it says salt here in the background, I would say that maybe it's a little bit softer over here, but it's very small differences. I think I can safely say that. A third and final example uh, where I have gone to f5.6, both in defocus control and in aperture. You can see here, again, I think it's very difficult to see, but maybe the white here flows more or gels more together than it does over here to the left. But I would say it's very nice bokeh in both cases. But the difference between having defocus control engaged and not, I I'm, I'm, must admit, I'm really hard pressed to to see the difference. I don't know what you think, but but I really think it's difficult. Also, if you get in close here, yeah, maybe it's a little bit more soft over here, but really the differences are, <laughs> there aren't much difference between these two. So my conclusion here is the difference between having defocus control engaged or not, irrespective of the f-stop number. Beginning for myself, it's very difficult to see. I thought it would also be interesting to see how this lens does towards the AIS lens that I showed you in the beginning. So here to the left, I have the defocus control lens. 
is set at f2.8 because that is the maximum aperture that the traditional, if I can call it like that, AIS lens will, will go to. So both of these are 135. You can't see that over here because the old AIS lens has no CPU contacts. So there's just zeros here because there's no communication between the lens and the camera body. But they are both one. 35 millimeters and they are both set at f 2.8 and the first thing you will notice is of course that as we know from Nikon both of these lenses have absolutely beautiful color rendition as I hope you can see here just looking at this picture of some flowers the second thing I notice is that these two old lenses they sh <laughs> they share a common issue which is uh, aberrations you can see here lots of it and i think this happens on old lenses in in high high contrast situations and i've seen this with other lenses uh, yeah if you've seen all of my reviews you will know that that these issues are common with nikon vintage glass and you can see the glass here to the right is 40 years old and the glass to the left is 20 years old and it looks like yeah <laughs> There's not much that has happened with coding, at least in that time frame. The second thing I noticed is that the co contrast, I think it is the contrast and not the uh, sharpness, but it seems to me the contrast in the old AIS lens is a little bit better, especially if you look here. I think there are many places where the old AIS lens actually has better contrast than the defocus control lens. Maybe it's just me, maybe you don't agree, but if you don't agree, then I hope you will agree that they perform very, very close to each other. The third and last thing I noticed is that if you look at the bokeh here, as you would expect with nine rounded blades, the bokeh here is round. Because when you're shooting at 2.8 uh, with the lens that goes down to 2.0, then you engage the, the aperture blades. So they are engaged here with the defocus control lens, but over here where I'm shooting wide open, that means that the blades are completely out of the way. And still, if I go in here and look at the bokeh, you can see on the AIS lens, they are more oval. It actually looks a little bit like a lemon, if you ask me. Whereas over here on the uh, defocus control lens, oops, on the defocus control lens here, it's much more round. And that surprised me uh, that the bokeh on the AIS lens, which is actually one of my favorite lenses for many reasons, but it's I think it produces stunning images. The, the bokeh is actually not as beautiful, even when the blades are not engaged. That actually, I think, speaks for the defocus control lens here, because even though I haven't engaged the, uh, the defocus control here, it, it's basically just two 135 lenses I'm comparing here. I think the bokeh on the defocus control lens here is significantly more beautiful than it is with the old AIS lens. Although this lens was clearly designed for portrait photography, I use it for many other purposes and I'm not saying this is an issue, but I just want you to be aware that the minimum focus distance is according to specs 1.1 meter. I measured it as you can see here to 105. So if you are planning to do, for instance, flower photography or other things where you would like to get really close to your subject, just be aware that the minimum focus distance is what it is and take that into account before you decide to go for this lens. When you're shooting at the minimum focus distance and have the lens wide open at f2, the depth of field is only one centimeter. And uh, maybe you think that's fun to play with. Uh, I have some examples here. But just be aware that an f2 lens can really give you some options for some crazy shallow uh, depth of field pictures. Yeah, you can really play with this effect if that is to your liking. And, and here the lens ability to go to f2 is really great fun. I can only recommend that you give that a try should you decide to go for this lens. So in conclusion here, I think this lens is very sharp when not wide open. It is fast at f2. It has beautiful bokeh. Color rendition is, as we know, with Nikon, absolutely stellar. The price is fair, I think, when you buy the lens used. It has mechanical autofocus as one of the few lenses, and the 135 lenses, that is. And then the build quality is stellar because the lens is made in Japan. On the con side, I would say that Speaking for myself, I think the defocus effect is very subtle. It is soft wide open relative to what it is at f8. Maybe this is a harsh 
conclusion because it is so short about f8 but that definitely is a big difference i think the price is too steep when the lens is new i don't think it's worth it to be quite honest flare and aberration control at least in my copy because it is 20 years old maybe it's better today is not what i could wish for and then finally the weight and the size it is a big lens so is this lens for you? I think there are three questions you should ask yourself. First of all, is 135 the right focal length? There are good alternatives, both 85, the classic portrait lens, and also 105. And uh, you can get all of that baked into one lens if you buy a zoom lens, say the 70 to 200. So that's one thing to consider. Next is that the lens is very fast, and maybe you don't need all that speed. 2.8, 3.5 may be sufficient for your need. So why pay for all that glass and carry it around if uh, you don't need that much speed and finally the bokeh it is very beautiful in this lens but i think you pay a bit for the defocus control and it is rather subtle so there are probably alternatives with also a beautiful bokeh where you don't pay a premium price for a very subtle defocus control capability so how do i use this lens I use it simply as a fast prime for landscape and stills. I enjoy the results that are different from what a wider lens or a zoom would give. And sometimes I find that a prime forces me to shoot differently. And I really enjoy that. Maybe you would too. As always, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye bye.